First at four, from blighted to beautiful, Detroit is counting down to a star-studded concert to celebrate the transformation of this iconic landmark. This newscast is live at Michigan Central Station, and Kim is keeping a close eye on your forecast. That's right, Karen. It is breezy, beautiful, and temps right now only in the mid to upper 70s, but we'll have temps in the 60s by the concert. We'll talk about it in just a few minutes. I am in a school district that brags being number one in education and Bosco sticks in the nation. Why both are extremely important this time of year. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. First at four, you are looking live at Detroit's latest success story. The once blighted Michigan Central Station is being reborn and it is ready to reopen to the public tonight. This is a moment six years in the making after decades of waiting. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew, and today we have moved our newscast to Detroit's Corktown neighborhood because we want to share this historic moment with the city and our entire viewing area. So here's why this is so important. Michigan Central Station was the city's primary railway depot from 1913 to 1988. It eventually fell into disrepair, and it had to be saved from demolition several times. Six years ago, the Ford Motor Company announced plans to transform the station into a new campus, and those plans are starting to come to fruition. Our Rod Maloney has been talking to people all day long about what this means to them. Hey there, Rod. Hi, Karen. You know, they started online here at 2 a.m. We spoke to the first people in line, and, and they're so excited to be here. And take a look at the building. I mean, to say that there's a transformation here, I think understates it. To realize just how bad this building was and what they've turned it into uh, is just simply staggering. And of course, the atmosphere out here has been very upbeat, very happy, lots of smiles, lots of people just coming down to see the neighborhood. They didn't even get tickets to be in, but they wanted to be here and they wanted to see it, touch it, feel it and be part of it. So let's hear from a couple of the people who are very close here in Corktown. I, I worked in Corktown. I've seen it when it was open. It was a shame what happened to it. It became a, like the Roman Coliseum. People would come to to take pictures of it or or graffiti artists would come. Uh, now it's exciting to see what it is. It's gorgeous. I've been inside. It's gorgeous. I'm so excited. I don't have a ticket. I'm not going to get in nothing, but just to be here, just to, it's just so exciting for me. I said I had to come early. I had just to walk around, get the good feeling. It's a beautiful feeling. It, it just feels so good. I, it really is. It's, a, it's a exciting, just the memories. Now, the rehearsals have been ongoing all day. You can see uh, a Mexican band warming up over on the far side. We have an Irish band over here. They've been working out and rehearsing as well. And it's all of the culture of the neighborhood Corktown has had for over 100 years. And, of course, the big name talent is coming. They were out here rehearsing as well. And so the sense of excitement is off the charts. And, Karen, I'm going to throw it back to you. <laughs> all right. All right, thank you so much, Rod. Some sound checks too just finished up around four o'clock. I can tell you it is going to be an amazing show. So the doors open at six o'clock. That's a little less than two hours away. And here are some things to know before you come down. Organizers are asking ticket holders to have a printed or a digital version to show when you enter. The streets closest to the train station are closed, including Michigan Avenue. And instead, you can use parking garages if you want at 1701 West Lafayette and 1401 First street that's going to cost you about 10 bucks and then there are shuttles to the station you can also park on floors five through nine at the mgm casino now if you happen to be using one of those rideshare apps you can get picked up or dropped off at michigan avenue between 17th and 18th streets so if you missed any of that information we made it easy for you got it all posted for you on clickondetroit.com and look for a complete guide to the celebration there as well so while we are waiting for that big party to start, we are joined by Carolina Plusinski. She is the COO of Michigan Central, and uh, I caught up with you a couple weeks ago when we were on the verge of getting ready. Yeah, right. And you had told me, like, you're so excited, but obviously nervous. I mean, this is the big yeah. day. You have been working on this for years, and if people don't know Carolina's background, um, you, are, you, you and your team were instrumental in going through exactly what you wanted to keep, what yeah, you needed to right. restore. That's right. How do you feel? You know, I think uh, we're here. 
Yeah. Uh, we're here and it's buzzing and we have hundreds of volunteers that are showing up today and we have, um, you know, staff and there's parties everywhere and and we're here and it's happening. And so we, uh, we're ready. Talk to me about the energy because I, I walked on here and I was like, wow, this yeah. is completely different than just even last week. Everybody's so excited. This building means so much to so many. And I just learned a little bit ago that there was never an opening for the station because it had to open so fast. So this is really the first opening of the train station. Which so, is pretty remarkable. Yeah, everybody's feeling it. Now, obviously, when this opens to the public, they're going to get that first sneak peek for themselves. What are you? Tell me one little special thing that you really treasure about this building. Oh gosh, I, and I know there's a lot. I, no, I did. I hope I hope that people see the brilliance of the the building and the architecture. And I feel like it's the also the decay that right. they'll see. Um, and because this, there's so many stories around that, and you're going to see moments. And so you really got to look for those. And we just want to say thank you. You are just so instrumental. Oh, love your energy. You. Love your leadership. Oh, thank and you. a shout out to your beautiful daughter, Gabby, sitting there. She's proud of you, too. It's so thank cool you. to see this. All thank right. You. We're going to have a great night. We're going to have a great we night. We're going to have a We're party. Here. We are. <laughs> all right. We hope you will stay with us for Local 4 News all night long. Our live pre-show coverage kicks off at 8 p.m. after your favorite game shows, Wheel and Jeopardy. The Live from Detroit concert starts at 8.30, and the list of star includes... Diana Ross, Jelly Roll, Big Sean, Jack White, and oh, there's more. Stick around for the Afterglow coverage at 1030 this evening. And then make sure to stay up with Devin Skillion and Kimberly Gill for Local 4 News at 11. All right. Well, obviously, another key factor today is the weather. And you know what? We got blue skies and white fluffy clouds. It's pretty gorgeous out there. Sky 4 once again showing us an overview of this newly renovated campus. We obviously are hoping Mother Nature is going to cooperate tonight. Things are looking pretty good. So let's check in with Kim. I know you had mentioned it's going to be a little bit on the cooler side. A little bit on the cooler side and better if you have short hair than if you have long hair because you can tell those winds are really whipping up out there about 25 miles per hour. Those winds are going to continue this evening. Temps are right where we should be for this time of year, but you've probably noticed it's a little bit less humid. Now we have to mention there is that slight chance of just a drip or a drop here and there, but for the most part it is going to be dry. Temps will be cooling down though into the mid to upper 60s for the concert. So if you are headed out, just know that uh, if you get chilly when it's in the 60s, which a lot of people do, and especially if there's a little bit of a wind, uh, you're just going to kind of want to dress accordingly. Cooler day tomorrow. In fact, we don't even crack the 70 degree mark. We'll talk about that plus your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. We do have other news of the day. We have breaking news right now from Shelby Township. Nearly an hour ago, Sky 4 was over M53 southbound between 21 and 22 mile. And that's where these two cars were involved in a crash. That portion of M53 southbound is closed. So make sure to avoid that area if you can. We're checking right now, but we don't have any word on any injuries. Overseas and around the world, June 6th. It's always a somber day and a time for reflection. This year is the 80th anniversary of the D-Day, and of course that is the nickname for the invasion of Normandy. Now, that started to turn the tide in World War II. Now, the big milestone comes amid new threats and ongoing wars. Victor Williams is standing by right now with more. Victor? Yeah, good afternoon, Karen. President Biden, the First Lady, and French President Emmanuel Macron all gathered at the American Cemetery in Normandy today. It's the final resting place for 9,388 Americans who died in World War II. Today, new wars in Ukraine and the Middle East are very much on everyone's minds as we remember those who sacrificed so much. Several surviving veterans who took part in the D-Day invasion joined world leaders to mark this moment in history. During his remarks, President Joe Biden paid tribute to all 160,000 Allied troops who took part in that daring campaign on June the 6th, 1944. The president also asking if today's generation will be up to the challenge of new wars, such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The president making it clear where he stands. The United States and NATO and a coalition of more than 50 countries standing strong with Ukraine. We will not walk away. Because if we do, Ukraine will be subjugated and will not end there. Ukraine's neighbors will be threatened. All of Europe will be threatened. 
The world is also watching a war in Gaza. Today, a new Israeli strike took the lives of at least 33 more people, including 23 women and children who are looking for shelter in a school. Israeli's military says that Hamas militants were also operating from inside of that building. It also claims that people working from that location helped orchestrate some of the attacks on October the 7th and sparked the war on Hamas. There's still no progress reported on the ceasefire proposal that President Biden unveiled almost a week ago. Israel has said that it won't end the war without destroying Hamas. The terror group wants a lasting ceasefire and full withdrawal of Israel forces before releasing more hostages. So the stalemate in war unfortunately continues. Karen, back to you.